So like I said, we're going to go over a little bit more of the weekly worksheet. Then we'll go over last night's homework and then we'll do notes for today. So today we are dividing decimals, the uh, beginning of it. We're going to spend the rest of the week um, dividing decimals. So on the back side, yesterday we finished going over the front. On the back side, number one is comparing decimals. What should we do to compare decimals? You should show a little bit of work on this because it prevents you from making goofy mistakes. What work can I show on these problems? So the first one is 47.308, 47.083. If you missed it, copy it down on your loose leaf. Parker, what work can I show? Yes, line them up. What do I need to line up when I line them up? Maya? The decimal point. So I'm going to put my decimal point right there and then copy it down. Once I have them lined up, it's very easy to compare the digits. Fours are the same. Sevens are the same. These are different. So that's the digit that's telling me my answer. Jude, what's bigger, three or zero? three. So it would face the way with the three. So 47 and 308 thousandths is bigger than 47 and 83 thousandths. Number, uh, the second part, 128070, 128.7. Again, line up the decimal points, fill in your numbers, so there's my decimal point. There's just a seven behind it. Now what do I do on this one? What do I need? I need to add zeros, make them the same number of decimal places. They're the same, same, same. This is the digit that's giving me my answer. Which one is larger? The bottom, the seven. So the one with the seven is the larger number, so it would be a less than sign. Last one, 83.08, 83.080. Again, line them up. What do I need to do on this one? Make them the same number of digits, Brant. Add a zero. When I do that, what do you notice? They're exactly the same. Okay, these are not a 33 and one third percent chance guessing game. On the next weekly worksheet, no work means no credit. Okay, because if you just slow down and show that little bit of work, it prevents you from making silly mistakes. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two, same thing. These should have a little bit of work. When I work these problems, I just copy it down in a vertical format to start. I keep in mind that I have to line up my decimal points. Again, notice my decimal points are all in a straight line. Now I'm going to go in and fill in my zeros. Do I need to fill in zeros up here? No, but if you want to, you can. It's not going to hurt anything. But the ones in the back are the most important. Now, pay attention if you're going big to small or small to big. I did have somebody lose, some people lose about a fourth of a point for going, giving them to me backwards. You did least to greatest. We want greatest to least. So we're looking for the biggest number. So which two am I focusing in on? Kendall? The one with the higher, like, like the two. Which is seven yeah, because when I'm looking in this column, I'm looking for the biggest number. So I have two zeros and two sevens. So that means I'm focusing in on this number and that one. 
So those are the same, those are the same. Right there, they are different. Which one is larger? Maya? The seven. the seven. So that means this is my biggest number. So when it's greatest to least, I'm going to write down as it was given. So 70.700 is greater than this one, because that's the only other one with a 70 out in front. greater than. Now I have to go back and look at my other two numbers. They both start with zero. That's the same. They both have a seven. They both have a zero. I'm looking at that zero and that seven. Which one is larger? The bottom. So I will write 7.070. And then the only one left is 7.007. Okay. Again, should you have a little bit of work on those? Yes, it prevents you from making the goofy mistakes. Okay, we're not gonna do any examples of those today. Those will probably be one of your IXL skills coming up. Okay, because I feel like we need a little more practice on that, but I think part of it is you guys are just rushing to get it done and you're not caring if it's done correctly. Okay, um, that's all, where we're gonna stop for today on the weekly worksheet. Again, you're going to keep it handy because we're going to finish going over it each day of the week. Um, next, I'm going to pull up the book. So pull your book out in front of you. We're going to check last night's homework. I'm going to pull up the answers on the board, but then we're going to discuss if we can come up with a better answer or if we agree that theirs is probably the best. Okay, so don't necessarily mark them wrong if you disagree. Okay, number one. They changed the seven to an eight. Raise your hand if you left the seven as a seven. Okay, and that's what they suggest we do. So let's leave that seven as a seven. We leave that seven as a seven. What are multiples of 7 that are close to 32? So, give me one. 35. 35 is the one just above it. What would the one just below it be? Haley? 28. 28. Is it closer to 28 or 35? 35. It's closer to 35. What's 35 divided by 7? 5. 5. What did they do? Why do you think they changed it to an 8? Parker? Because they saw that 32 was a multiple at 8. Is 8 close to 7? Yeah. yeah, so they went the other way. We'll see which one's actually the better estimate. 35 divided by 7 equals 5 is 100% okay. 32.17 divided by 7. 4.59, so it's kind of right in the middle of 4 and 5, and actually 5 is a little bit closer because it would round up, okay? So again, anytime you can leave that single digit number alone, try and leave it alone. It usually gets us the better estimate. Since this one is actually like kind of right in the middle between 4 and 5, no matter what, your estimate's off slightly. Okay, next one. They left the 3 of 3. What, so they rounded up to 180 because they looked at 17. We're trying to get close to 18. What would the one just below 175 be? 150. Do we agree that 180 is probably the best? Yes. Okay, did anybody have something else that you think is correct? Okay, because again, on some of these, there's multiple correct answers, but on some of them, there's one answer that's probably the best. Number three, do we agree with that one? Yeah, why did we like that one? Yeah, we didn't have to really change anything. We just dropped the decimal place off. Same thing with number four, 36 divided by 6 equals 6. Do we like that one? Okay. And again, if you have something different, just raise your hand. On this one, if we didn't go up to 20, what would we go to? Haley? 15. 
Why on this one are both of those exactly the same okayness? If that makes sense. Brant? Bryce? How far is 15 from 17.5? Uh, two and a half. Two and a half. 2.5. How far is 17.5 to 20? Two and a half. It's exactly in the middle. So both of those are perfectly okay. Which one is the high estimate? Which one is the low estimate? Parker? Okay, so... That, that means the answer would be somewhere between three and four if we actually divided it out. Three is the low estimate, four is the high estimate. It can't be over four because we rounded up to get to that answer. It can't be below three because we rounded down to get to that answer. So both of those are perfect. They're exactly the same distance from our actual. So those are both good estimates. Next one, they just changed it to 120. Questions on any of those? Brady? What did you divide? Okay, why'd you take 120 to 140? Okay, do you see why it should be 120? Because it goes in evenly, so we shouldn't have needed to change it. Okay, next page. Maybe. Okay, the information in the table can be used to determine the density of each object. Density describes how tightly the particles in an object are packed together. We've talked about density, okay? We haven't talked about the math behind density, but it tells us you can find density by dividing an object's mass by its volume. So if you take the mass and divide it by its volume, that gives you density. So if I take mass divided by volume, I get density. So it gives me the mass, it gives me the volume, so I should be able to find its density. Estimate the density of aluminum. So the actual problem is 13.5 divided by 5 equals blank. Since it says estimate, we can change the problem to what? 15 is probably closest. What is 15 divided by 5? 3. Now, here's something we haven't talked a lot about, but I'm going to start sprinkling it in because the more times I sprinkle it in, the more, time, more likely you are to remember it. Does this problem also say 13.5 divided by 5. Yeah, because a fraction shows division, okay? All I'm going to do is add in the labels. Grams and centimeters cubed. If you write a division problem as a fraction with its labels, that gives you your label for your answer. If I divide, we changed this to 15. What's 15 divided by 5? Three. I'm going to write it like this. The slash is just the division bar. What labels have you seen a slash in before? Anything, Jude? Yeah, but like when have you seen a slash in a label? Haley? So your numbers are fractions. I'm talking about in your labels. Percentage? Nope, not in percentages. Let me. What do we, how do we say that? You would say miles per hour. The fraction bar, you just say the word per. Miles per hour, they even abbreviate to MPH because this is less known. So how would I say that label? Harper? Grams. Cubic centimeters. Yeah, so grams per cubic centimeters. On division problems, a lot of times the labels are something per something. 
but we don't write the word per we just if we pull the label straight from the problem and I just write it slightly different I could write it as three grams over centimeters cubed but I would still say three grams per cubic centimeter okay and again you don't have to know that right this second but that's a skill that you will eventually have to know so see right here that's where they came up with that label is because when you took grams and divide it by cubic centimeters your label is really just grams divided by cubic centimeters but we say grams per cubic centimeter um, number eight is the density of gold greater than the density of mercury explain what would you have to do to determine if it's greater or not Maya yeah, you would have to find the density of both. So let's just estimate up here. Um, what could we round 56 to to where it's divisible by 3? Brant, 60 would be a good one. What's 60 divided by 3? 20. Sadie, what could we round um, 121 to to get it divisible by 9? Okay, does that work? She changed it to 10. Does that work? Okay, so that would be 10. Did anybody leave it as 9? Yes. Parker, what did you do? I changed the 11 to 17. 17 or 18? 11 to 17. 117 or 180? Or sorry, 1. So multiples of 9, what would our multiples of 9 be? 9, 18. So 9, 18, 27. If I change this to 180, is that close? No. no. If I leave it as 90, it's closer. Okay. I said 90 divided by 9 would give us 10. But in our brains, does 90 seem close to 120? No. no, okay? So this is probably the best estimate right there. Parker, did you have to do long division? No. So you knew what 117 divided by nine was, just like that? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. Number nine. The density of gold is about how many times greater than the density of aluminum? Density of gold, what was the density of gold? 20 divided by 3, because the density of aluminum. And right here, how many times greater? That does not mean multiply. What does how many times greater mean? Brady? Divide. Divide. Okay, because if I said um, my cat weighs three pounds, my dog weighs 21 pounds, how many times greater does my dog weigh than my cat? You wouldn't multiply 21 times three. You're trying to figure out my cat times what number equals my dog how much larger so this would just be 20 divided by 3 is that an easy problem to work out can we work it out mentally 20 divided by 3 no what can we change it to to work it out mentally 21 divided by 3 is 7 so it's about 7 times greater Did you divide it out or did you estimate? What did you change it to? Because we have these numbers already up here. Nineteen ten. So you knew fifty four divided by three without doing long division? Or did you have to divide it out to the side? Then how'd you come up with 19? Okay. 
I'm just saying, guys, remember, these are mental math. Most of us don't know our multiples of 19. So if you have to stop and divide it out, even if you're dividing it out up here to using long division, that's still dividing it out. These are supposed to be quick, easy mental math problems. Number 12, you had to read carefully or else you wouldn't think there is enough information. Kendall measured the rainfall in her area for a year. Her readings totaled 34.56 inches for a year, which is the best estimate of average rainfall per month. So if it was 34.56 per year, what does that mean, Kendall? Yeah, that's for the whole year and it wants one month. That gives multiple months. It wants one month, so you're dividing by 12. Since it said a best estimate, we need multiples of 12 that are close to 34. So it would be 36 divided by 12, which is three. So about three inches per month. You had to read carefully to catch that. Okay, let's flip on over to page, it's lesson 11. This 11, yep. Page 444. Look at page 444. We're actually gonna do it on loose leaf, but keep your book open. Title your loose leaf. Lesson 11. Dividing decimals. Two plus to the top. And then write page, so you know where these problems are coming from, 444. We're going to start with number one. I'm going to write it how the book shows it. Oh, it has it already set up for us, doesn't it? So leave ourselves some space. Give you some time to catch up. Who can say that problem properly? Bryce. Three divided no. The problem, or the problem. Parker. 48 and 33 divided by 3. So 48 and 33 hundredths divided by 3. It's not 3 divided by, that's how it looks when we're in working it. It, how else could this problem have been given? If they didn't give it to me like that, how could they have written it? Horizontal, across. So I want us to write that. We're going to write it over here. 48.33 divided by 3 equals blank. You have to be able to recognize it both ways and then work it properly. Because soon we will do 3 divided by a larger number. But these would be flip-flopped. The rule, this is dividing a decimal by a whole number. Who can refresh my memory? What is my rule for adding and subtracting decimals? Maya. Line up the decimal points, Line up the decimal points add like normal or subtract like normal. Fill in zeros when needed. How do we multiply decimals? Harper. Yeah, we count them up. So add and subtract, line them up, multiply, count them up. Ignore the decimal point, multiply normal, count up the decimal places in the problem, make your answer match. The rule for divide is move it over, 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 and up, up, up. They start with the easy ones where we don't have to move it over. 
The rule for dividing decimals is you cannot divide by a decimal. You have to divide by a whole number. Right now we already have a whole number, so we get to skip the step of making it a whole number. So if it's already a divisor that's a whole number, we just go to the up, up, up part. Meaning you just move your decimal point straight up into the quotient. Now, when you do your long division, you have to make sure you place your numbers in the proper spot. So let's start from the beginning. What do I have to think about to do my division? Kendall? How many times does three go into four? Yeah, how many times does three go into four? Just one. So I put a one above my four. Sophia, what's three times one? Where do I put that three? under the four. And then what math do I need to do? Subtract. subtract, I get a one. Remember, after I subtract, stop and check. What am I checking at this point, Haley? If the number you just got from the subtraction is lower than your... Divisor, yeah. Is my remainder smaller than my, my divisor? If it's yes, I'm good to keep going. Now I drop down the eight. How many times does three go into 18, Jude? Six. six. So I put a six above the eight, the number I just dropped. Six times three is 18. I subtract, I get a remainder of zero. Am I done? No. You are not done, listen carefully, until you are have a remainder of zero and you have dropped all of the numbers or until you get to a remainder of zero, okay? Because sometimes we can drop that three and not be done yet. We have to get to a remainder of zero to be done. Because what could I add behind those two threes and it still have the same value? Sadie? Zero. Zeros. You have to keep adding zeros behind that last digit until you get a remainder of zero. If I had to guess, they'll give us a few easy ones to start. But you can add and drop as many zeros as you need to get to a remainder of zero. Or general rule, if you go out four decimal places and you're still not to an end, you round it to three digits. So you stop after four digits and then round it back to three. Because a lot of decimals go on forever without a pattern. Okay, but I'm not there yet. Let's drop this three. How many times does three go into three? Once. Put a one at the top. Three times one is three. Subtract. I drop a three. They're giving us some easy ones to start. How many times does three go into three? Once. Once. Sophie getting all this? And I get a remainder of zero. So my answer is just 16.11. If you need to turn your paper sideways to keep your nice, neat, straight lines, do that. Because is that neatness important on division? Yes. Okay, let's go down. We're going to do number two. Pull it straight from the book. Who can say that properly? Who can say it properly? Bryson? Yeah, 8 and 8 tenths divided by 2. Nate, what's my rule for dividing decimals? Uh, Okay, so what do I have to do with my decimal point? How do I know where it goes? Nope, we don't count in this one. You move it up, 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 okay? And actually the rule is move it over, 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 and up, up, up. Why do we not have to do the over, over, over today? Kendall? We have a whole number right there. 
Okay, when that's not a whole number, we have an extra step. We're getting there. We're starting off slow. But then we move it straight up into the quotient. And then we do our math like normal. Brody, how many times does 2 go into 8? Higher. Four. So four times two is eight. If I get a remainder zero, am I done? No. no, you're not done until you've dropped all of the numbers that are there to be dropped. So I have to drop my eight. Abby, how many times two go into eight? Four. Four a second time. Four times two is still eight. Now I have my answer. Let's write out the whole problem. I don't care where you write it. If you want to write it over there, we're down here. 8.8 .8 divided by 2 equals 4.4. .4. Using estimation, 8.8, .8, we could round it down to 8 or up to what? 10. What's 8 divided by 2? 4. What's 10 divided by 2? So my answer should be between 4 and 5. Is 4.4 between 4 and 5? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so our answer makes sense. That's how we could use estimation. OK, we're going to skip to a harder one. I'm going to start with the hard ones and actually work back and see how many we can get done. Let's go to number 12 on the next page. Number 12 on the next page. Tells us to divide and then round to the nearest hundredth. If I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth, what place is that? How many places past the decimal point? Two. But to be able to round, how many places do I need? Three. Okay, so we're going out three so that we can round it to the hundredths place. If it said round it to the tenths place, how far out do I need to go? Two. You always need to go one extra to be able to round it back down. So number 12 says 78 and 4 hundredths divided by 8. Is that correct? I'm looking at it upside down. Yeah. Okay. Can I solve the problem as is right there? Nope. I have to set it up. Oops, there's my box. 78.04 divided by 8. Move it over, 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 and up, up, up. So I'm going to move my decimal point straight up into the answer. How many times does 8 go into 7? It does not. So I'm going into 78, which means my first answer number will go above the 8. That is very important or else our decimal will be off. Finley, how many times does 8 go into 78? Nine times. So I'm going to put it above my 8. Finley, what is 9 times 8? 72. So I'm going to put a 72. Subtract. Is 6 smaller than my divisor? Yep. So I'm good to keep going. What do I do next? Sadie? Drop a, zero. drop a zero. And do I care about that decimal point when I'm dropping numbers? No. When I push it up to my answer, I'm done with it. Okay? I've put it in the correct spot. 8 into 60. Brady, how many times does 8 go into 60? 7. 7. So I put the 7 above the 0 because that's the number I just dropped. That's 56. Is 4 less than 8? Yep. So I'm going to keep dropping. How many times does 8 go into 44? Kendall? Uh, five, times. five times. Now, common wrong answer is 9.75 remainder 4. <laughs> you cannot mix and match decimals and remainders. When you divide a problem, you can give the answer with a remainder. You can give it as a decimal or as a fraction. You cannot mix and match any of those three. Okay, it's this one, this one, or this one. We are giving it as a decimal. So we have to get to a remainder of zero 
or this one told us to round to the hundredths place. I'm to the hundredths place now, but I cannot stop, okay? Because I have to see if that next digit is above a six or is above a five or not to decide if it's gonna round higher or stay the same. Remember, you can add as many what's as you want. Zeros. Zeros, because if I add a zero right there, does it change the value of that number? No, no it does not. So show that you're going to add a zero, and then you have to drop that zero. How many times does eight go into 40, Kendall? Five. And regardless of this came out, this one comes out to a remainder of zero. But even if it didn't, why am I done with my math, with my dividing, Lori? Because you just add all your numbers. Nope, because I can add as many zeros as I want. So I haven't dropped all my numbers. Because your I'm saying even if my remainder wasn't zero, I would be done right now. Oh. Kendall? Because you're rounding to the hundreds. Yeah, my rule said round to the hundredths place. I could keep going if I wanted to, but to be able to round to the hundredths place, I just need a third digit. So once you have that third digit, you can stop. So now we're going to show that this is 9.755. But I'm rounding to the hundredths digit. So I have to decide, is that 5 going to keep the 5 a 5 or go up to a 6? It's going to go up to a 6. 9.76. Then here, I'm actually going to draw a squiggly line. Why am I doing a squiggly line and not an equal sign, Haley? It's not really an estimate, but is it the exact answer? No. no. What was the exact answer? 9.755. OK? I'm just trying to get you to see the difference. Are they both very, very close? Yes. Yes. Are they both correct? Yes. Yeah, if it said give the exact answer, we have it. If it said round to the nearest hundredth, we have it. What if it said round to the nearest tenth? Parker? Nope. Nope. 9.8. Nope. 9 okay. It could ask us all of those, and they're all correct depending on the question that we're being asked. Okay, we're going to do one more together. It, what do you have to be good at to divide decimals? Multiplication and long division. Okay, you have to be able to do both of those. If you make an error on your multiplication or your subtraction, you're not going to be able to get to the right answer. We're going to do number 9. 7.21 divided by what? 7. Seven. OK. And what did the directions in this section say? Round to the nearest tenth. Round to the nearest tenth. So how many decimal places do I need to go out to round to the tenth? Two. OK. Let's set it up. Remember the front number, the dividend goes inside, the divisor goes outside. Move our decimal point straight up into the answer. Dane, how many times does seven go into seven? One time. One time, so I put that above. Subtract. Am I done? Jude, what do I do next? Drop down the two. Drop down the two. How many times does seven go into two? Brant? Zero. So I put a zero at the top and then I have a double drop. Okay, I should see my double drop. Remember, anytime you have a double drop in your work, you have a Zero up in your answer. How many times does seven go into 21? Three. Three? Three times seven is 21. Remainder zero. So I'm going to write 1.03, but it said round it to the nearest tenth. Max, which of those numbers is in the tenths place? The zero. So I'm going to circle it. That's the one I'm trying to get to. So that three. Is it going to stay a zero or go on up to a one? Lori? Stay a zero. Stay a zero. So I'm going to change that to a squiggly. 
1.0. Why in this case should I leave the zero there? Even though it's not necessary all the time, why should I leave it there for this particular problem? Maya? Because it told me to round to the tenths place. If I get rid of it, do I have anything in the tenths place? No. But the exact answer would be 1.03. Does that make sense? Okay, get your pencil ready. I'm going to tell you which ones you're doing for homework. They're going to be from this page. I want you to circle number four, number five, number seven, number eight, number ten, eleven, fourteen. How many is that? Two, four, six, seven. Oh, there was one more. Um, on the next page, I want you to try 15 and 16. I want you to do all of your work on loose leaf. Okay, I don't want you to try and squeeze it in the book. You don't have to write anything in the book. If you want to write the answers in there, you can. But you don't have to have anything. Where is all of your work going to be? On loose leaf, if you want to continue it on the paper you've already started on, that's fine. If you want to get a new piece of paper, that's fine too. Just label the top, okay? We only have about five minutes, um, but I want you to go ahead and get started on it.